Hello everyone, I am Triple J, and this is Brain Food at the Movies. And for tonight's feature, I am reviewing World War Z. The zombie apocalypse is messing up my week. The internet is always down, can't update the Twitter stream. You see, I have a drink here on my hands. I have a drink. I found maple flavored whiskey. It's seriously not as good as you'd think it would be. I literally opened up the bottle, smelled it, and I, I could I thought I made a mistake in that that it was something I was supposed to pour over my pancakes. I literally had to drown a lot, drown it in a lot of um, Pepsi Max in order to make it drinkable. And it still smells like something I should pour over my pancakes. Now, bad drinking choice tastes aside, yes, I've seen World War Z, and I let it percolate in my head for a little bit, and I thought over the good points and the bad, and overall, it's surprisingly good. Yes, surprisingly good, I, I have to say. In fact, I wouldn't mind seeing it again in theaters. I wish the prices of the tickets were a little bit lower, but, well, what are you going to do? Well, let's start off with, let's start off with the overall plot. The overall plot is that the zombie apocalypse is upon us. And this movie doesn't, it doesn't fuss around. We are, like, literally ten minutes into the movie, boom, zombie apocalypse. Everything goes to hell. So, I appreciate that. No, no. Like, taking your time. The movie is called World War Z. It's zombies on a global scale. Everyone's fighting them. I appreciated that about the movie. And Brad Pitt plays a United Nations investigator named Jerry. No, not Jerry. Um, I forget his name. Anyhow, United Nations investigator Brad Pitt has to go around the world in order to find what he believes is the cure for this zombie plague. And he travels from a literally a floating reef of boats that is they call it the the floating United Nations. Uh, fly from there to South Korea to Israel and to some place in Russia. And that's the overall plot of the movie. Um, just one more thing, as you know, with all these reviews, there are spoilers. Cue the spoiler signal. <laughs> Now, that's the basic plot, and, well, the basic plot is that while Brad Pitt does not find a cure, uh, he does find a way for humanity to fight back. He does, you know, save the day, or as much as you save the day. The story kind of ends not on a completely bleak note, but on a uh, darker note with some signs of hope in showing how humanity fights back against the zombies. And, well... I appreciated that. It was really well done. So, what did I like about the movie? Well, a couple of things I liked about the movie was I really liked the sound effects. Uh, when you actually, for the zombies, literally, there are parts where Brad Pitt is really up close with the zombies, or he sees a zombie attack, and they're going, and you're like, you know, that sound. You just go like that. But it's like that sound really, really high. And it is just creepy as hell. Oh, there were times I was sitting in the theater just going, because that's not normal. That's not right. So I enjoyed that. There was a good overall pace to the movie. The movie kept moving. It didn't seem, it did not drag or slow down in at any one spot. It kept moving. Uh, it starts off a little bit slow, that first 10 minutes, and then they're in with Brad Pitt and his family in Philadelphia, and then <laughs> zombie apocalypse, and boom, it's the movie is going. It's on its feet, and it's running almost as fast as the zombies themselves. Which brings me to my next point. I thought I was going to hate the zombies the way they're done running. I mean, Zack Snyder brought them in as running. He brought the fast-running zombies 
with, excuse me, he brought the Fast Running Zombies with his remake of Dawn of the Dead back in 2003. And I thought I was going to hate how they were used here. And I got to admit, the way that uh, they used the zombies and how fast they ran, and that they literally slamming against each other, uh, for say taking a tight turn in quarters, or bouncing off of walls, or cra uh, they're crashing through glass, it really does give the sense that this is something inhuman that is just out for blood. It's... It was done well, I have to admit. You know, the, the effects, of course, you know, it's 2013. If you can't do practical, wood, practical effects for zombies at this stage, um, yeah, I, I don't know what to say to that. Yeah, that was done really well. Uh, it was intense. Another good point for the movie. Uh, one of the nice things about any kind of horror, and this is more horror action than just straight up horror, is that you got to have... It's got to be intense. It's got to be, you know, dramatic, suspenseful, and I felt that throughout this movie. It it was really good. Uh, and, and oh man, <laughs> sorry, I gotta take another drink. It had some laughs. I'll say that it had some laughs. In fact, I'll point out that this movie about the global apocalypse with zombies had more laughs in it than Man of Steel. You know, DC Comics, you really should take a lesson from this. If a zombie apocalypse movie has more laughs than your Superman movie... So... And they were placed appropriately. Uh, the characters were smart. Brad Pitt's character, very smart, he's very obser observant, and he sees things, and he's able to piece them together. And that's how he's able to come upon the, not cure, but at least the most effective way for humanity to fight back. And that is for to be infected with a different, highly contagious, but still, uh, uh, very lethal but still curable disease as, a, as a Z observes and you see this in the trailer uh, zombies are literally running around this one uh, one character it's actually a character this young boy that you see in Israel when they breach the walls and I thought it was just because he was standing still and being quiet that is part of how you remain undetected by the zombies uh, but it's because they find out that well that character, plus a few other characters, they were infected with something else. And that the virus that drives the zombie plague, it needs a healthy host. And I thought that was, that's a really clever way of explaining how this works. If you are infected with, say, and at the end they mention H1N1, you know, the bird flu, um, not tuberculosis, but there was another disease. Uh, that they mentioned that they use as a kind of vaccine to camouflage humans uh, against the zombie plague. I, I thought that's a really smart, different way of going about it. So it shows that there was some thought. Another thing that I like is that there were snippets of the book put in. Now, this is a book that has been bought and has gone through I don't know how many rewrites. Apparently there were something like three or four rewrites and a ton of footage reshot. Considering uh, they could have took nothing from the book but the title, but the fact, fact that they actually took stuff from the book and put it into the movie, uh, it's been a while since I've read the book, so I can't remember how much, but there were some stuff. Uh, for example, they called the zombies Zeke. You know, you know, one soldier says, "I want to see some Zeke's on the ground. Take them out if you can't hit them in the head straight away. Shoot them in the knees. Take them down." So there was that. There was the disbelief at the use of the word a zombie near the beginning of the movie, which I also appreciated. There was the showing of how Israel was prepared for this event. Uh, that was pretty good. So, yeah, I, it, it was a good movie. However, there were some bad elements here. Now, had I been able... I, I actually just managed to find some time tonight and got to this movie on time, I would have I would have uh, filmed a little segment and given some predictions. 
One of them, one of them would have been how many gay people were in this movie, or anyone from LGBTQ. None, absolutely none. So just as I talked about in my review of Robopocalypse, all the gay people, everyone that was an LGBTQ, they're off on another planet living in Eden, in paradise. You know, they took off. It's like, oh man, this shit is going down. We're, bye guys, take care. We're out. Um, as for people of color, uh, there's one character, literally one black character named Jerry, who is Brad Pitt's boss at the United Nations, who literally blackmails him into t retaking up his old job to find the cure, well not find the cure, but track down the source of the zombie plague. And the, and the trade that he makes is, hey, you go out and you do this, your family can stay on this military ship and be safe. And he can't even keep that promise. He's the boss, but he has almost no power. The only other black person I saw with any other kind of significant screen time was an infected zombie scientist at a World Health organization center and that's literally it uh, it's you know it's it's really a, a trope and really a cliche at this point that uh, most people of color accomplish very little in these movies aside from die dying or at the very least, Jerry didn't die or was killed off stupidly. That belo uh, that belonged to the virologist who tripped, fell, and shot himself in the head. I am not even kidding. Uh, so, poor showing of people of color, no LGBTQs in, in this. And, well... It's really hard to even call this movie World War Z. Yes, it used some of the terminology, and it referenced a fair amount of the material from the book, but the book really should have been picked up as an HBO series. When there was talks of it being picked up uh, for something, I believe it was something like 2008, 2009 we were all hoping that it was going to be for a series on HBO and then after The Walking Dead came out on AMC we were really hoping it was going to be a series on HBO because then you could have taken your time you could have showed all these various parts of the world all these examples of humanity that are fighting and sacrificing like um, uh, for example the general the general in, in the general in India the uh, Chinese nuclear sub commander um, you know the uh, the Cu uh, Cuba uh, the Cuban government what they did to participate in the fight back against the zombie plague you could have gotten all of this done and, uh, and I meant for a movie you couldn't squeeze all of that in I do wish that they could have at least tried more as as much as as I like Brad Pitt as uh, an actor we were seeing an awful lot of his face in this movie. Well, it, we did have also the one Israeli uh, female soldier who I can't even remember if she has a name at this point. Or I'd have to look it up on the IMDb here. So, poor, uh, that's what I meant. Poor showing of people of color, no LGBTQ people. Jeez. Uh, it's... But it is, yeah, it is overall an entertaining uh, movie. I mean, I would see this in the theaters again. I don't want to pay money for it, but I would see it. So it's sort of a mixed bag. I honestly wish they hadn't called it World War Z. Uh, you you should have called it something else because. It just didn't feel like World War Z. World War Z had this wide diverse of people. Uh, sadly enough, no actual no gay people. There's like maybe one or two mentions of gay people, but you had actually had, but you uh, you had, you know, 
again, like I said, you had you know you had Latinos, you had uh, Chinese, you had Japanese, you had, you had uh, eight, all these other uh, eight Asians. You had uh, the, um, you had black people. You had South Africa that came up with the uh, plan to save the world. That, that did save the world, and you had Russia, you had Brazil. There's even a mention of Canada. Hey, there was you know they actually showed. Canada, and it wasn't a winter wasteland. Thank you for that. There are other parts of Canada that are not covered in snow. So, it was a shame that we never really got to see all of that. And again, as I said before, it had more laughs than Man of Steel. So, overall... This movie is very much a mixed bag. The what it does good, it does very well. At the and at the very least, while they didn't show many people of color, I'm really am glad that we didn't get any kind of thing like where he had like a you know a black buddy to go along with uh, Brad Pitt, who halfway throughout through the movie dies heroically to save him or, or some other trope garbage like that. I, I'm really glad they had avoided that at least. Uh, so, again, a mixed bag, but a better mixed bag than you would get from a usual Hollywood blockbuster movie. It's, yeah, take it or leave it. I, I, if you know, if you enjoy a good action movie, a good zombie movie, surprisingly very little gore I'll say about this movie, and and yet still intense, you know. I say, you know, give it a try. If you want to wait until Blu-ray, you know, or DVD, or until it comes out on Netflix or whatever, give it a try. It's. You know you're 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 not gonna you're not gonna come out of it at the end wishing you had those two hours back. And that's about all I've got left to say about this movie. I'm Triple J, and well, that's all I got left to say. Take care and cheers.